Hello, hi Floss Tube. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Um, it is Sunday, February 25th at approximately 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Just got done watching um, the recap of the Olympics and the closing ceremonies. Um, I ended up kind of not watching the Olympics much this week. I was kind of disappointed with the way the United States was performing um, at the Olympics this year. And some of my favorite sports to watch, like the short track speed skating, weren't really on much, at least when, when I could watch. So I kind of lost interest in it this week. I watched a lot last week, but I lost a little bit of interest in it this week. Um, but the Olympics are over, uh, which means we can get back to regular TV, which for me kind of means uh, looking at uh, women's college softball that's, you know, has started up for some colleges. Uh, and also the new Survivor starts, I think, this Wednesday, so I'll probably be watching that too. Um, other than that, not a whole lot is going on. Um, I actually wrote some notes down for this floss tube video. Um, so I'll be going through that. Hopefully you can hear me a little bit better. My husband helped me adjust the microphone settings for my uh, video program on my laptop. So hopefully you can hear me a little better. <coughs> anyway, um, this last week, I so I have some updates, some life updates for you and a little bit of housekeeping to do. I wanna thank everybody that um, has recently subscribed to my channel. Um, thank you so much and um, just let me know kind of where you heard me heard about me I think some of you may have subscribed from the uh, Facebook group the stitch mania Facebook group I believe is where the um, floss tube list is so some of you may have seen my channel there and come on over and subscribe to me and thank you for that um, I haven't seen too many questions posted on my Facebook videos so maybe I'm doing a good job of um, explaining things. Um, maybe you don't have any questions yet, but if you do, just let me know. I'm considering getting or starting a Q&A section of my video. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> how this will work. Maybe maybe I'll even save the Q&A sections for some of my Stitch With Me videos that I hope to do pretty soon. But uh, things are going pretty good. Um, I had started talking about work. Um, as you know, in January, I had uh, a couple of very long weeks where I worked 55 plus hours. Um, I'm salaried, so I don't get pay paid overtime for all that extra work. And this next week, I'm probably going to have to play a little bit of catch up because for the last two weeks, I have been in training to learn a new function that I'm going to be taking over from another one of my coworkers for uh, student loans. We, my department, the department that I'm in, we do quality audits for credit bureau disputes for the different different line of, lines of business for our bank, like student loans, mortgages, credit cards, stuff like that. We audit, we audit the quality of the information that is submitted to the credit bureaus for the different lines of businesses for credit disputes. So um, that's kind of what I do. And being that I was in training for the last two weeks, pretty much six to seven hours a day, pretty well straight through the week, my, um, my workload's a little backed up. And I had intended on working this weekend, but I just, I just didn't really want to. I kind of wanted a down, down weekend. And, you know, I, was, I started my workout, workouts back up this week with my uh, personal trainer and I had about two weeks off so I, I've been a little sore I've been kind of feeling a little run down just really didn't feel like logging into work so I'm gonna have some work to do this week to catch up and hopefully get everything done um, hopefully next weekend won't be too bad so we shall see but anyway the Olympics are over which is good <laughs> my training is over which is good I learned a lot and it was fun and, uh, well, it, it was work fun, I guess, if you can call work fun. Um, but training went pretty well. I feel pretty confident in it. So hopefully my new functions that start up in March will kind of go pretty well for me, I hope. 
All right. So, um, as many of you know, I re recently retired from roller derby, and it's been a couple of weeks since I've had to go to scrimmages on Wednesdays. And this last Wednesday, I went to my local needle workshop, crossed my heart, and participated in the Wednesday Stitch Group with my friend Vicki. It was fun. I did a little bit of beading on one of the Mill Hill Santas that I have had in the beading stage for a few years. So I picked that up and I started working on the beading on that. So um, I can show you that here in a bit. But um, over the last couple of weeks, I had a little bit of stitching time to do uh, to work on a couple of projects. So I actually picked up Let It Snow by Stitch Rovia that I will be showing you here in a few minutes, what I kind of worked on and got done. Um, and other than that, nothing much else is going on. Uh, the Ohio Valley, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, you know, all the states kind of over on this side of the world um, and the east side of the U.S. have been experiencing a lot of rain this week. So there's been a lot of flooding. My in-laws live on the, the Ohio River on the West Virginia side and Marietta, Ohio, which is on the Ohio side of the West Virginia side. Uh, some of you have maybe seen pictures if you follow me on Facebook or um, anything anyway but I might I'll see if I can maybe attach a couple of pictures of, of what the Ohio River looks like on their front from their front porch um, looking across to the Marietta Ohio side but the Marietta Ohio area and Parkersburg and some of the other southern um, Ohio counties and you know other states counties along the river have been experiencing flooding because of all the rain I think this weekend Columbus got maybe three to four inches of rain total since Friday so um, we don't have any flooding per se here in Columbus just you know some ponding on the roads and stuff like that but a lot of the communities along the Ohio River and some of the other rivers are experiencing flooding right now and it can be kind of scary. My in-law's house is in flooding, as far as I know. Last weekend, the waters were about a foot or two down from their actual street that they live on, which is a lot, um, <laughs> you know, because there's a boat dock down the hill in front of their house, and that entire area down there was completely flooded over. Um, the old Williamstown snack bar that used to be down there um, that closed at the end of last season for good uh, was pretty much completely underwater, which is pretty amazing. I don't think I've ever physically seen the water that high, but the water got that high last week. And uh, I think the rivers down there are supposed to crest either overnight, tonight, or tomorrow. Unless, of course, the reports are true and the flooding isn't going to be that bad. But anyway, so there's flooding in southern Ohio. Hopefully everybody down there is okay um, and everything reopens up soon let's see so um, I'm just looking over my list here uh, hmm. so I wrote down stitch with me number two so I did a kind of did a stitch with me video and a couple of you have expressed interest in another one or possibly me doing a diamond painting video so um, I will probably do one of those in the next couple of weeks I don't know when exactly but I will let you know and as far as my Stitch With Me project, um, I might actually work on Let It Snow, but I might actually pull out an old one of mine. Um, I have I have some news <laughs> on uh, one of my old whips <laughs> that came through this week after uh, Wednesday night after my Stitch Group. I'll tell you the story about this a little bit later, but I have an old whip that I'm finally going to be able to finish. So I'll tell you a little story about that um, soon. Um, but anyway, so that's about it. I kind of talked about the updates that I wanted. And so now I'm going to talk about some new stash. Stash, stash acquisition, haul, whatever you want to call it. Um, <coughs> a couple new patterns that I have. Um, I like Heaven and Earth Designs, um, specifically Jasmine Beckett Griffith. She... Um, 
she does a lot of patterns with the um, little girl, not girls, but with the females with the really big eyes. And um, I like, my husband and I are, like Japanese animation, so the really big eyed uh, patterns really intrigue us. So there was a couple of new patterns posted fairly recently. And I went and purchased the downloadable um, patterns for them. So the first one that I really liked, the, the newer one, was uh, by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, and it's called Violet Icing. And this is what it looks like. This is Violet Icing. I printed off the pattern. Usually what I do with these Heaven and Earth designs is I stitch them using a tablet with the PDF file, and I use a PDF reader where I can highlight the stitches that I've completed. But this is one, um, Violet Icing. She's got a lot of pretty colors in there, and that dragon is just absolutely cute. That's So that's new for me. And the second one that I uh, ordered recently was also by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, and this is a new pattern from her um, by Heaven and Earth Designs called Dice Dragonlings. My husband really, really liked this one. Now the interesting thing is, is this one is stitched on black, well, it's not stitched on black fabric, but uh, the, sorry about that, I'm putting myself in the shadow, um, but this corner here is basically an entire page of one color. <laughs> so I think when I, when, I, when I get ready to kit this up, and I may actually get the dark fabric, a very dark fabric. So I actually don't have to stitch this corner because it's it's like almost two full entire pages of the same color. So yeah, I might actually just stitch this on a very dark fabric and then just stitch from here, you know, down to the corner. But this is very cute, Dice Dragonlings. My husband and I, we play, uh, we play board games, role playing games and stuff. So these, you know, this, uh, this has an eight sided die. Looks like an eight-sided die and a four-sided die, a D4. No, maybe that's a D10. No, that's a D10. That's a D10. A D10 and a D4. And then the dragon. Is that is? Is there two dragons? No. Has a little dragon, but then these are dragon wings. You can see their their wings. It's just very cute. So those are two new patterns. Um, so while I was at my craft stitch store on Wednesday night for the stitching, um, the shop owner, Jenny, came up to me with a little, little package of floss, and she said this had fallen off of something that I had previously ordered that had come in and I had paid for, um, and they found it at the bottom of their, um, order box, so, um, Way back sometime late last year, I had purchased Glendon Place, a couple of Glendon Place patterns. This one is Fudgy Mint Moose. Um, I have most of the fibers. These is, This pattern calls for dinky dyes. So I now have most of the fibers I need for it, which means sometime soon I'm going to be able to get the piece of fabric for it. But anyway most of the dinky dies floss for it came in. So we have, um, this is natural, natural, which is just a kind of a creamy white. We have, I only have one of these, more is on the way. Blue ice is kind of like a very pale light blue. You might not be able to see it, it might be kind of washed out. And then I have, um, Iron bark, the two iron barks. This is a dark brown. And then I have the two evergreens. Evergreens, with dinky dyes. And this is cockadoo, or cacado, cockadoo. It's another green. It's kind of a lighter green. So here's most of the floss for Fudgy Mint Moose by blend in place. So that will probably be 
uh, a new start for me later on this year once I get the remaining floss and um, the fabric to start it. But I'm looking forward to that. So I got the pattern for Fudgy Mint Moose. Fudgy Mint Moose, like one in place. I got the fabric for it. I mean, not the fabric, the floss. Not the, some of the floss. <sighs> so, I'm going to talk about that. So, at my local craft store, um, one of the ladies uh, that also works at the store is a really good friend of the owners, really good friend of everybody that goes in the shops there. Um, she had kept this with her <laughs> since Christmas time. Um, it had been a little while since she had been at the cross stitch store with me. So she knows that I like bunnies and she had this in her stash. So she brought this to me. So I have bunnies galore, 50 designs. There's some really cute designs in here and I may actually already have this, but I thought it was really nice that she thought of me and gave this to me. So thank you, Betsy. Thank you for giving this to me. But it's got a lot, of, a lot of really cute patterns in it. I really like the little boy and girl bunny up here. Um, of course, the bunnies in the in the cabbage patch or lettuce patch are really cute. Um, so inside they have other really cute patterns. I don't know if I can show you this. I'll try and show you without showing you the patterns. But there's some more. This one here is holding, I don't know if you can see it, he's holding like heart roses or something. He's really cute. Um, and then here's double pages. Let me show them to you this way. These double pages. More bunnies, a bunny sweatshirt. More pages of bunnies. And then there's, I think, one more page. One more page of bunnies, so I'll show it to you over here, so as not to show the patterns. But yeah, one more page of bunnies. Bunnies galore. Lots of bunnies. It's really cute. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you for giving this to me. Um, I also got my first issue of my Cross Stitch Gold subscription, which is here. This is the March-April issue of Cross Stitch Gold has some cute patterns in it. I don't know if I'll stitch any of them right away, but it has some really cute patterns in it. Um, one of the ones I thought was kind of cute is the dream catcher. And the dream catcher was pretty cute. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing that was really cute were the bird houses. The bird houses were cute. Yeah, I don't know if I'll stitch any of these, but I kind of wanted to get a subscription to this because I found this. And I have a, um, a friend that's getting married, probably in 2020, um, to her girlfriend. And I may actually, I'm going to probably, uh, hopefully she's not watching this, because I'm going to talk to her mom and see if this might be something that I can stitch for them, um, since I have a year and a half, two years, um, before it needs to be done. Um, so I can kind of take my time and pick this out, but I, I may actually use this wedding sampler for, um, a wedding gift for a friend of mine who's getting married in 2020. Um, so yeah, I guess I may actually stitch something out of here. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess I could tell you the designer. The designer is, uh, Doreen Jones. D-U-R-E-N-E-J-O-N-E-S, Doreen Jones. Um, yeah, that's about it as far as, um, oh, as far as patterns. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm looking forward to getting this subscription, though, because I really like this magazine. And I got a pretty good deal on it, and I'm probably going to extend it another year for the same deal. So, it's pretty good. Cross-stitch gold. <laughs> so, the bis bi biggest news that I alluded to a little bit before um, is, you know, I have an old... Ow, that hurt. Ow. <laughs> I just whacked my finger on the, the, the TV stand. So, a lot of you may remember one of my first... Um, YouTube videos 
I had indicated that I have an old whip. The Joy to the World by Laurie Birmingham. And I don't know if many of you remember, but uh, I had mentioned that I had lost this lost this pattern. I'd lost a pattern for it. I have I have the symbol chart. I have the symbol chart. Let me get this here. I have a symbol chart for the pattern. I have the symbol chart for the pattern. I have the symbol chart for the pattern. And it has basic cross stitch instructions on the back. I don't have the pattern. I lost the pattern like 10 years ago or more because I ain't got it. You can see in my bag, there's the floss. I have the floss from the kit. Um, I have the green banding to show you where I'm at. This is how far I got. I lost the pattern. So Wednesday night, after I took my friend Vicky home from Stitch Night at our local cross stitch store, I was on the stash, the cross stitch stash unload website, the Facebook group. I was on the stash unload Facebook group. And apparently they had released this as just a pattern. Just a pattern. Not only a kit, but you could get the pattern for it for a longer table runner. This was just a bell pull. Um, this was just the bell pull size. You can see it's just a bell pull. You can see the bell pull hardware um, that came with it. Um, but there was a table runner pattern to kind of go along with this that was released. And a lady, <laughs> a lady on the Stash Unload Facebook group had the pattern for the table runner uh, for sale. And I belt fell out of my chair. <laughs> luckily, luckily for me, I was the first to respond. And she sent me the PayPal invoice the next morning. As soon as I got it, I paid it. So hopefully, my pattern for this will come. And I'm so excited that I can finally get this whip further along. Um, I'm just so excited. You, you just don't even know. I, I really, literally about fell out of my chair. I was so excited to get this. But yeah, my little Lori Birmingham Santa will sometime soon <laughs> hopefully become a finished project project it's not going to be relegated to a ufo pile thank god so there is that so that's my big news is that i found the pattern for my Lori birmingham santa <sighs> um other than that i really don't have any big news that's the biggest news that i finally found the pattern for that so i'm so happy um Anyway, so that's about it for new stuff. I talked about the Olympics being over. Um, I put on here that I may or may not watch the closing ceremonies. I did watch the closing ceremonies. They were just okay. Um, eh. Looking forward to getting uh, and getting into some other stuff. I'd like to. Uh, get going on some of the floss tube videos um i have been watching sunday high tea by off the grid off the grid stitching is that who that is off the grid off the grid needlework she does sunday high tea where she starts a new project on the last sunday of the month i haven't started a new project on the last sunday of the month <laughs> and i didn't start one today and i'm not gonna start probably anytime soon but she also does a giveaway, or she does a uh, special, well, I guess it would be a giveaway. She does a giveaway for her some of her um, small business products that she she makes with her sister-in-law. And uh, so I was, I've been watching those. I've also been um, kind of watching the Friday Off the Grid uh, YouTube videos where she stitches um there's a friday off the grid 
stitch along <sighs> where people just post online that you know on the off the grid Facebook group that they stitched along um, on Friday nights and kind of a way to get everybody stitching together uh, I participated once vaguely for about 15 minutes close to midnight um, I didn't participate this week but I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna start doing it at least following along and commenting because it'll give me a chance on those Friday nights where we don't go out um, and do things until way late that I can come home and just kind of pull out some stitching projects projects and stitch um, I don't really have very much in the way of updates um, like I said earlier I worked on uh, one of the Northwoods Santa's mill hill kits um, trying to finish up the beading um, that's not it it is in here, one of my project totes, there it is, I think, no, it's not in there, is it in here, yes, yes, oh, there just went my mouse, lovely, hmm. So anyway, um, this is my little kind of beading project case. I have some beading stuff in here. I don't need that. All right, so this is the Northwood Santa that I've been working on. You can see some of the beading. I added, let me put this behind it. There you go. So I added some of the beading down here. You can see this is where I was. I get some of the green beads, some of the green beads in the tree don't have much more to do hopefully to finish this and then I can uh, back it and finish it for good um, I have my beads in these little teeny tins red beads on this floss for it but anyway this is specifically do I even have that in here anymore it's in here Sorry, I'm a little disorganized tonight. Um, this one is Northwood Santa's. This is the Pine Tree Santa. The Pine Tree Santa. This is an old Mill Hill kit. Um, I'm probably going to be working on this for Mill Hill Monday. So that's about all I have for that. All right. Um, another little stitchy update that I have. Um, put that back in there. So, some of you know that I have picked up um, a pattern on Etsy by a designer called Stitch Rovia. Um, I think I only have the black and white copy of yeah the black and white copy of the thing Oop. sorry about that yeah cover up there we go this is it let it snow by stitch rovia and I don't know if you remember me talking about how in the pattern like some of the um, the frame, the white frame area is uneven in the pattern. Like there's there's some area there's not an error per se, but the chart the chart for this it wasn't charted even. So like this corner is stitched different than this corner, and it kind of drove me nuts. Um, I was getting ready to just do it as charted and then I decided that I was going to make some changes and make the um, make the border more even so it was more symmetrical so I went ahead and did that I charted I made updates to the chart um, made updates to the chart you can see 
Uh, I turn this around this way. But you can see my notations in the chart. I actually changed the chart. I changed the chart a little bit to make it a little more symmetrical. So I started stitching, mo I got most of the border stitched, um, and I made a little bit more progress because not only did I have to adjust the border, but I was going to have to adjust the design on the inside some in order to finish the piece. So I decided that the easiest thing for me to do would be to add another row of the tree on the left hand side of the piece. And so I got I got some of the border fixed. I also put it on a bigger Q-snap, but I got the border down here sort of fixed. Um, and then I started working on the tree so I could add the extra layer. So my tree here is actually going to be one row thicker this way than um, most other people's that have stitched it because I just added a row here. I figured that would be the easiest way to um, adjust the pattern on the inside, the scene on the inside, was just to add the extra row of stitching in this tree. So um, that's where I'm at. I actually got some of the tree done, which I hadn't done before. I think I'm going to finish the tree. My goal is to finish the tree next and then work on the let it snow up here at the top. I may actually start across here and work on the pond and the, the city scene that's right here, but uh, I don't know yet. So, oh, and this is my bunny bubble tea needle minder. The needles kind of want to do their own thing on this and I'm not sure why. There's my bunny bubble tea. My bunny bubble tea needle minder. My bunny bubble tea needle binder. It's really cute and I really like it. So this is Let It Snow by Stitch Rovia. This is about the only progress that I've made on any of my cross stitch projects um, in the last two weeks since my last video. So hopefully by the next video, hopefully it'll be in a week, not two, I will have um, more progress on this and hopefully the tree will be finished and I will have started some of the lettering up at the top. It says let us know. But this is coming along pretty well. Um, I don't know if I'd be allowed to um, give out my adjustments to the pattern. I don't I don't know if if I could do that um, without getting permission. Um, I, I probably won't offer that to anybody. Um, I can kind of describe how I how I did it. If any of you want to stitch this and uh, kind of follow along with what I did to adjust the pattern, but uh, yeah, so here's Stitch Rovia's Let It Snow. Hope you enjoy that. Wait just a minute. Oh, and my project bags. This is my project bag. Woo! <laughs> oh, one of a kind. It's one of a kind. No, really, they're um, glad. I think they're just extra large glad ziplocs. So yeah, that's what I've been kind of toting, keeping my uh, projects in hand. Oh yeah. So um, I don't know if you remember, but I also had picked out um, some of this DMC light. I think it's light effects thread. Um, e3747. E3747. Um, to do on the um, pond that's down here. So I don't know if you can see how shimmery it is, but it's kind of shimmery. So I may end up using it down here on the pond, um, the skating pond. But uh, I don't, I won't know that until I get there. Um, let's see. That's really about it. Um, as far as my projects go, well, I'm at 35 minutes. I didn't think it would be this long. And it's almost 11 o'clock. Well, it is 11 o'clock. Alright. Didn't get much done on that. Didn't get any done on that. Alright. So, that's pretty much it. Um, I really didn't get much done on the Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler. I didn't get much done on Stone Hearth Hutch, if at all. Um, one of the things I did work on, um, 
we're trying to get a new group started um, at church to do like community outreach, outreach and crafting. And um, let me put this in here before I lose that stitch. Um, so I crochet. And uh, one of the things that I've been working on with the Bell Choir Director is she has contacts with uh, some groups or she works at a, she works with, um, she's a chaplain. And so she does stuff for, um, you know, people throughout, uh, throughout Ohio. And she has contacts with a group that um, collects, you know, fetal demise blankets for one of the local, um, local hospitals. So I've been crocheting and I started a fetal demise blanket. This is in white. I'm using Red Heart. Sorry about the name. Red Heart with Love. Red Heart with Love. This is just white. White. And I'm just simply doing a solid granny square for this. You can see here. This is what I've got. Um, so when I get this to about 15 inches by 15 inches, which is the size that they need, this is just my little charm that tells me what size hook. Um, what size hook to use. It's a little angel. I made these myself. I have these for all the crochet hook sizes that I use. Um, but uh, I'm going to add this one. Will probably, I'll probably have a row of pink yarn. I have pink yarn to go with this. Um, but I'll probably add a row of pink yarn to it. Um, and then I'll probably make another one with blue. I don't know if they'll allow purple yarn, but they've requested pink and blue because it's, you know, um, they use these to kind of cover up the, the babies, you know, the, the babies that don't make it and, uh, it kind of helps comfort them and, you know, it gives the parents something that they can take home. So this is what I'm working on right now. Fetal demise blanket, um, or just a baby blanket in general, just a small preemie baby blanket. Um, and this is the solid granny square pattern. All right, so that's that's pretty much all I've been working on. Um, so yeah, a new crochet, whoops, um, and stuff like that. But other than that, I really don't have anything anything much going on. Um, if you guys, um, one of the other things I'm thinking about doing is uh, uh, adding to this, or when I do my stitch along videos, um, using the tags, the needle worker tags that you can find. So um, I'm probably going to pick a needle worker tag and uh, do that for one of my next videos coming up. Um, and if I do that, I will post a link to the list of videos or the list of needle worker tags um, that you can use in your own videos. Um, it's just, they're basically just questions that you ask yourself and you tell everybody your answer. And they're kind of interesting and thought provoking and it's pretty cool so um, I'll probably be doing that for my next video but other than that there's nothing much left um, I've pretty much talked about everything I want I will <laughs> give an update when I finally get that Lori, Lori Birmingham pattern uh, because I'm so excited and I'll probably actually just sit and stitch on that a little bit with you um, when I do get the pattern but uh, no yeah, we're having some interesting weather. I guess one of the counties in Ohio had a tornado this weekend. Anyway, it looks like the, the news has started. So anyway, I'm going to call this a night, and I wish everybody well. Happy stitching. Stitch all the things, buy all the things, finish all the things, start all the things. Um, just enjoy the weather. Thankfully, it didn't rain today. <laughs> Today was actually kind of sunny, which was pretty nice for a while. I'm kind of playing with my crochet hook. Oh, a Susan Bates crochet hook, by the way. Size H. I like Susan Bates crochet hooks because they don't have the tapered end. You see there? The end isn't tapered. Um, it's called an inline. But I like Susan Bates hooks. Um, don't have too many of them, but I like these. Like these. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's about it. Um, no real updates on. Oh, one of the things I did want to talk about. So, 
Um, in order to travel and take my stuff with me places, I like using those little recycle bags that you can buy from stores. Like, for instance, this. This is from Joann's. This is a little bag, just a little, you know, $1.99, 99 cent bag from Joann's. This one says, every day is an adventure. So, I went to Joann's, uh, this past week. Uh, just to look, because I haven't been to Joann's in a little bit. And they have some really cute new bags. So I got this bigger bigger project bag. But look at this. It's got cats all over it. It's so cute. This is really cute. So this is a just a little tote bag, you know, it's got it's got stuff. It's a tote bag. Um they're pretty cheap, they're recycled material. But I love using these for carrying things, especially like when we go on trips or we go to the in-laws or stuff. This is where I carry a lot of my a lot of my crafts and stuff in when I go places. I love this bag. This is so cute. And then so they have a smaller version that has the same similar bag. This is Mio. That's so cute. Uh, these are the jo Go Green reusable totes. Whoops, sorry about that. The Go Green reusable totes. And this one is $1.59. So this is $1.59, these large ones. These larger ones, I think, are $1.99. But, yeah. So I got those. And then they also had another one. This one's really cute, too. This has cactus. Cacti. Cactus on it. Cacti. And it's peach and mint green. Just cactus. So I love these bags. These bags are so great. <sighs> but anyway, so that's what I got. That's all I have for you this week, you guys. <clears throat> Again, stitch all the things. Buy all the things. Beat all the things. <laughs> Start all the things. Finish all the things. And uh, drink lots of tea. Oh, I'm drinking Red Rose Decaf. Red Rose Decaf. My mother-in-law was a really big Red Rose tea drinker. So, um... I kind of have a bunch of that on hand. So I've been drinking some tea. Um, but anyway, I hope to see you probably, hopefully, within a week. Um, and I will also post an update when I get that pattern for that Lori Birmingham, Lori Birmingham design. And uh, we'll go from there. And then maybe I'll turn that into a Stitch With Me video to make it a little longer. But um, got all my notes done. And... Uh, we are going on almost 45 minutes, so I will let you go for now, and if I don't see you in a week, have a good week, and I will see you soon. I just have to get get my laptop mouse pad working. All right, take care, you guys. Have a good one. Good night.